Clinton High School, Jones Intercable presents High School Basketball. Tonight, the Rock Valley Conference leading Clinton Cougars host the Blue Devils from Evansville. Hello again, I'm Mike Griffin along with Bob Morgan, and it should be a good one tonight. Bob, as Dick Vitale would say, we have SRO. Standing, standing room, room only. only. I you got, got you it. on that. Hey, what yeah. do you think? Two good ball clubs tonight, huh? It will be. Both teams are excellent teams. Uh, Evansville got beat last week, and uh, which we thought uh, this would be a, a real battle for a share of the title, but right now uh, Evansville is out, and Clinton is in the driver's seat with uh, tonight's game and a game next week which will decide the championship title. Mike, here comes the starting okay, line. Okay, the first Blue Devil out is Joe Benash. Joe is a 5'10 junior for Evansville. And Clinton will call her, uh, counter coming back with Robbie Lockerman. Watch this kid tonight, Bob. 6'1 sophomore. Got 40 last time, huh? Just a 27-point average. Oh, he's tough. For Clinton, this is Tom Franklin. He's a 5'8 senior. I watched him warm up, and I'll tell you what, he can throw it through. This is Brian Dilley. Brian is 5'9", and he's a junior for the Clinton Cougars. Coming back on the other side now for the Blue Devils from Evansville. It's number 43. That's what he'll wear. Matt Bratsky, a 6'3", senior. Coming back for Clinton, we've got a 5'10", senior, uh, Del Gunnick. They'll wear number 14 this evening for the Cougars. And Evansville, of course, uh, has a real balance attack. Uh, they have several players that can get in double figures. This is the other Bean Ash, uh, half of the brother tandem. This is John, and he is a six-foot senior for Evansville. Another forward for the Clinton Cougars will be introduced. Uh, he's listed as 6'5". They just called him 6'6". Six, six. He's growing. Jim Hodge, number 22. Watch him tonight, how about? Oh, we saw James win our uh, game against uh, Edgerton do a couple slam dunks. <laughs> and this is number 51. The last Blue Devil introduced Tommy Her uh, Todd Heritage, who is a 6'1 senior. And finally for the Clinton Cougars, and this young man will be playing at center. That's Sven Gonstad, 6'3 and he, junior. He, and he did a heck of a job last uh, week against Edgerton. The uh, thing that bothered uh, Clinton last game we did here was uh, was the press. They had uh, a lot of trouble on the press until later on in the game, until they decided uh, how to break it, and they had very little trouble. But they did a good job on Lagerman, and uh, Hodges took control on the inside as they were playing Lagerman on the outside, leaving James Hodges open on the inside. As we mentioned before, the Evansville Blue Devils have uh, much more balanced scoring, Although uh, Swen did uh, a heck of a job. He ended up with 14, 15 points here and against Edgerton. And you can see the, uh, the overall records on the screen for the two ball clubs. Blue Devils at 9-9 nine and, nine and the Cougars coming in with a whopping 13-5 and five mark. So, you know, they should be a slight favorite tonight, but we got a packed house and we should have a good ball game. This is James, ha James Hodge. He spins it around to Lagerman. Lagerman gets his own uh, stumble and puts it back in. First two, the guy we talked about, Robbie Lagerman, puts the Cougars on the board and they're out front. 2-0. Just underway from the Clinton gym. Back will come Evansville. Uh, being at, there's that long three-pointer. I told you three, about that was a four-pointer. I told you about Tommy Franklin, Bob. Before we came on the air tonight, I saw him hit six in a row in warm-ups. That he was just made it seven. That was the NBA. That was 26 oh, feet. That was just outstanding. We got a foul call underneath as uh, the Clinton Cougars tried to go inside to Gonstad, and he was fouled in the act of shooting, and he'll go to the line. Sven Gostad, 6'3", junior for the Cougars. First one comes off the side of the iron. A little, little quick there on Gostad's part. And he cashes in on the second. Clinton Cougars, not her up. We come back with Evansville the other way. There's a force inside. And we've got the ball kicked out of bounds, and Evansville will inbound under their own basket, and it will come in in the hands of Bratsky. Having a little trouble, and now it's picked off on the inside. Comes back to Hodges, and Hodges on the break, and he'll give it up, and he throws it away. Well, that time, bounce pass would have been in order. There's a player right between uh, uh, James Hodges. He had Gunnick out on the wing and couldn't get it to Dell. 
but uh, the ball was tipped and so Del Gunnick will inbound again underneath of his own basket. Ball comes into Lochterman. Nice spin move, goes up and underlays, but he is an called offense. for an offensive yeah. foul. Good call, good call by TJ Dake. Good move underneath, good, uh, good job by TJ. Other official, Jerry Schlem, both of Milton. This is Franklin, and we'll see if uh, Brian Dilley gets on him a little bit closer this time as he comes in, as he'll throw that three-pointer up if he can get it. There, we got a drive inside, and that is comes off, and Joe Beanash, and the rebound comes down in the hands of the Clinton Cougars. Bring it up will be Rob Lodgerman again. No pressure on the part of Evansville to this point. A good man-for-man man defense. That's Hodge. That was Dilly with a nice bounce pass. Got a rebound inside by Gonstad, and he scores, and he's fouled. Well, Swen picked up his fourth point, going for five. Sven will go right back to the line. 5-3. Clinton Cougars on top in front of a, their home crowd, and as we said, uh, standing room only. Big crowd here in Clinton tonight. Gonstad on the line for the second time this evening. And he gets one. 6-3. Clinton now, three-point margin. 6.34 remaining first quarter of play from the Clinton gym. Joe Beanash swings it around. At the other guard is Franklin. Tommy now goes right down the paint and dishes it off. Back out to Franklin. He throws up that three-pointer uh, three pointer again. And that time he didn't draw iron, and the coach says, settle down, Tom. And he says, yeah, I know, coach. Yeah, he says, I know. Yep. Says, I'll, I'll take it easy. Yep. i got to get my feet set. He's got a rather unusual shot. He gets kind of the old set shot, the chest yeah. on the chest, oh, and yeah. uh, if somebody's in his face, he'll have trouble with that, but if they leave him open, he can get a few. Clinton coming back from our left to right, Lodgerman gives it up on top to Dilly. James Hodge inside, Dilly, and uh, the ball is turned over. we got Evansville now on the break, but it's picked off by Hodge. Hodge is coming back the other way. Reverse. Nice pass to Gunnick, and a reverse layup, Dell Gunnick. Nice pass by Hodges, and Gunnick uh, used the the board to screen himself and laid it in. Eight to three now, Clinton forging that lead. Both teams in the man-for-man -man defense and uh, Heritage gives it up to Franklin. They're jamming that middle. They're really good. Franklin and back into the corner to Matt Brodsky. He'll look inside and he goes inside to Heritage and Heritage having a little bit of trouble. He'll shoot the jump shot and that's good. Nothing but net, Todd Heritage. The 6'1 senior. Pulls Evansville within three at eight to five. This is Del Gunnick. He made the nice pass last time. Last time down, gives it up to Hodges. Hodges uh, looked like he might have got away with a walk there, and he overlays on the inside, gets his own rebound. Good hustle by James kinda, Hodge. And Hodges will put it up again, and that comes off short, and Evansville pulls it down. Joe, John Beanash picks it up. Comes up to Todd Franklin. Tom Franklin, and now we've got a walking call inside on Brodsky, and Clinton will come back the other way. Beautiful crowd tonight, uh, as you mentioned, standing room only. I'll tell you, it's cold outside tonight, but it's very warm in this gym right now. Oh, it's got to uh, be 80 so. Very hot in here, and that may have an effect. we got a foul called immediately on Joe Beanash as Gunnick uh, brought it up right at midcourt. And Dell will inbound. Gets it in, no trouble to Lockerman. Now we've got an over and back, and uh, the ball was was inbound into the front court, and the pass went to the back court. You can inbound to the back court, but and we've got a timeout called, and with Clinton on top of Evansville, eight to five. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Mike Griffin, along with Bob Morgan, we are in Clinton, Wisconsin, this evening and a jam-packed gym has watched the Evansville Blue Devils come storming back, and they lead now by three points, 1916 over the home Cougars. Well, thanks to Tom Franklin's three three-pointers, and I mean, they, were, they weren't <laughs> from the 19-foot uh, range. They are talking 24, 25, 26 feet. You know who that, reminding me, Bob, the flat-footed semi-chest shot reminds me of Bob Morgan. You shoot the ball like that. Two-handed well, to from the chest? No, 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 no. But, I mean, you shot that. You know, you didn't really, you were never known to get off the ground a long ways, Bob. Well, you could slide a dollar under it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and while we were uh, gabbing there, the Clinton Cougars come away with the rebound, and this will be James Hodges to Lodgerman. Lodgerman's been cold tonight. He'll go right in for the layup this time, and a nice block on the inside by Brodsky. 
Good job on the inside by Matt Brodsky as uh, they're watching Lochterman pretty carefully. Got both, the, both starting lineups in the uh, in the ball game with the second quarter of action. Got a change in defense now for the Evansville uh, Blue Devils. We got on a break. Here we go. Watch out, Joe Beanash. He will lay it in. Joe Beanash. And the Blue Devils now have forged away to a 21-16 lead. That's Beanash with four points. Hodges, his usual spot. He's been getting the baseline there. This time he picks up his dribble, oh. goes inside to Lagerman, and he underlays. But he's fouled from behind by Beanash, and Beanash did not think so. He thought he had all ball. Well, that was a close one. It looked uh, like he might have a lot of ball there, but they call him on the back. And Rob Lagerman will go to the line. Lagerman, of course, as he mentioned, uh, Rock Valley leading scorer after 12 games way in front. He has 318 points. Jane Hodge is in fourth place with 226. But uh, James Hodge has the second most field goals. And, and he has one three-pointer. Lockerman has 18 three-pointers. The great thing for Coach uh, Jim Barnstable is that uh, this young man is a sophomore. I mean, Ooh, a couple I mean, more years. Whoa, I'll tell you. He's going he's gonna to light him up for a long time around here. Right down the middle goes Beanash. This time he uh, overlays and pulls, pulling it down is Sven, and away they come. And we've got a uh, blocking foul called on the inside on Franklin, and the crowd, uh, now the Evansville fans come alive because Franklin... Not a popular call. Boy, not a popular call. I thought the little three-point shooter was uh, pretty well set up, but Lodgerman gets the call, and he'll go right back to the line with his club trailing by three. Gunnick uh, comes out of the ball game and coming in uh, back in for Clinton is Brian Dilly. Yeah, we're talking about uh, Lockerman being back. How about the other starters? Brian Dilly is a junior. Sven Gonstead is a junior. So uh, the two people they'll lose right now are James Hodge and Del Gunnick. I tell you, they're going to have a tough ball club for a long time. Cashing in on both free throws is Lockerman and his club now Pulls within one. Right. Evansville 21, Clinton 20. And then you just add uh, Corey Pete and uh, Tim Sigger. With that bunch, you have a starting team for next year. We got a steal by Gonstad. He flips it back into the middle, and uh, we darn near had an over and back call there, but Brian Dilly gets away with it, gives it up to Hodges. Clinton can take the lead. Hodges tries baseline, can't uh, find the door. Right back out to Dilly. Nice pass inside to Hodges. This time he'll work and spins in and out. No good. Rebound, B Nash. Joe gives it up to his brother. Or, uh, John gives it up to his brother, Joe B. Nash. I just having a little uh, tough, tough luck tonight. He normally hits a bundle of those. I guess I, I made a mistake. I said John was in. John is not. That was Joe that got the ball. Get the ball. And this is Joe B. Nash. Uh oh boy, I'll tell you. Oh my gosh, Bob. Well, how far is that, Bob? Oh, that's 20. Oh, at least uh, 26 feet. Well, I tell you, when I, when I was a kid, that would that looked like half court. There's Lotterman with a three-pointer. That rims out. Hodges right over the top. Rebound. Good. James Hodges showing a little uh, jumping ability there. And he got his little rhythm bounce in there so he could get up in the air. He was up. And as you can see, the Clinton Cougars have taken a one-point lead. Now Evansville forces it right back inside to Heritage. Heritage lays it in. Todd Heritage, 6'1", senior, puts Evansville back on top. Four points for Heritage, four points for Hodges. Ball game starting to heat up as we are down to five minutes and 23 clicks on the clock. First half of action. Got a pushing foul called on Joe That's Beanash. Beanish. His second. Clinton trying to run it through the lane, and Beanash uh, set up a little uh, post-mortem for him there. Checking back in will be John Beanash now. And looks like he's going to sub for brother Joe. No, that's uh, Beanash's third foul. That's Joe's third. So Joe finds uh, the bench next to Coach Dwayne Updike. And he's done a yeoman's job so far. Uh, little Joe Beanash has been all over out there. On the line, this is Corey Peed. Sixth man for Clinton Cougars. And he gets the, the bracket. Hodge was there ready to cram it down if it came out. And it's all tied up, 23 apiece. 5.20 left, first half of play from Clinton. Second one is good, and Clinton regains the lead, which they enjoyed early. We're saying Corey Pete will be back next year, junior. Franklin uh, coming down, and Brian Dilly is not giving him anything anymore. Franklin picks up his dribble, and they're right on him. Oh, nice dump pass on the inside to Brodsky. And Brodsky 
Puts Evansville back on top by one. Seesaw. Brodsky with four points. Good battle so far. Hodges likes this spot. We'll see if he can get baseline. He doesn't. This is Lodgerman. Well, they're giving him that pick that from down below. Matt Brodsky is really doing a nice job on Lodgerman. I mean, he's right with him. Hodges gets a short jumper, and uh, he had to have that. He lost his man. Well, give Brian Dilley the credit for that. He drove, uh, penetrated, and passed off to Hodges. Clinton nice by pick. one. This is John B. Nash holding it. Now we've got a oh. trip on the inside, a call against Clinton, and we'll see which Cougar gets up. That's number 32. I think Schwen will pick that one up. Yeah, Sven Gonstad will get it. Got a couple subs coming in in this hot evening now. Uh, we'll see if we can pick them up for Clinton. That's Tim Seeger, number 40, coming in, and looks like Paul Wagner is in the ball game for Clinton as well. This is the little guy, the three-pointer, Franklin. This is Franklin. He goes baseline. He puts it on the inside, and we've got a violation on Gonstad, it looks like. Uh, Seeger, excuse That's me. That's Seeger, Tim Seeger. Tim Seeger. As he fouls Timmy Tro, who is in the uh, ball game for the Blue Devils. Well, both teams will be on the bonus from here on in. A lot of subs here as we near the four-minute mark. Uh -oh. And there we go again. Bombs away. Watch out. Tommy Franklin. Boy, he, he, we were right in our bomb sites here. We knew that one was good. He has 12 points on four three-pointers. Well, he's been working on that. I'll tell you, he's out shooting it through the old apple hoop. 28-26. Evansville back on top. Jump shot. Uh, Lodgerman comes off. And again, Beanash is all over. Got a break now with John Beanash. And he ought to lay it in. And he doesn't. He overlays. Goaltending. Goal Should be goaltending. Looked like offensive basket interference. It was offensive basket interference. And I, yeah. The fans do not uh, like that call. Well, what did they call that one? I, he called, I believe, the bucket. He called the bucket good. It was offensive Offen goal interference. Yeah, it should have been because I was a, I was an Evansville player. Yeah, that hit the ball while right. I was on the rim. And somehow we have John Beanash on the line, and uh, I'll tell you what, the crowd is hooting because uh, the Clinton fans do not like it one bit. And I got to go along with them. I don't know what the call was, Bob. I do not know what the call was. 29-26, Evansville on top. And they call the basket good? No, they did not call the basket good. But why Beanash is on the line, I don't know. That was the, the mystery. Evansville, the rebound. And now uh, going, Tim Seeger is fouled by an Evansville player underneath as the battle heats up. Foul goes on number 43 for the Blue Devils, Matt Brodsky. And we'll march back down to the other end, and the 6'3 junior, Tim Seeger, will toe the stripe. Jade Grossman and Mark Walmer in for the Evansville Blue Devils. It's hot in here. They, well, I tell you, I'm, I am hot right now. And they're playing, they're playing hard out there. And Tom Franklin is hot. We've uh, had a lot of events here. We've had uh, the three-point show. We've had a mystery call at the other end. Uh, first free throw is good by Seeger. And he pulls the Cougars within one. Good rivalry uh, over the years between these two clubs. Clinton uh, is leading the overall series 11 to 8 over Evansville. So we've uh, had, a, had a lot of close ones. Second one is cashed in by Seeger, 29 28, Evansville on top. With the ball is Jade Grossman. Inside to Heritage, short jumper comes off, doesn't follow his shot, and it'll be off of uh, it'll be off of an Evansville player, and Clinton will. Take control at the 332 mark, first half of play. Very warm Clinton High School gym. Little uh, press now, man to man put on by Evansville. Heritage trying to work over Logterman. They double him up on the inside. They get it to Seeger and he lays it in. Four nice job by Logterman. Four points for Seeger. Well, Clinton finally takes a lead, 30 29. Seesaw game. Jade Grossman back to Tom Franklin. Two guards working on top. In the corner, that's B. Nash. Long jumper off the back of the iron. Whoa. Whoa, it was hot jumper. Whoa, there. I'll tell you. He almost hit his head on the back. Yeah. Plate. You betcha. I thought he was going to bang his head on the rim. He was way up there. And we'll come back down to the other end again as things have slowed up in the last minute and a half. We are approaching that three-minute mark first half. James Hodges on the line. That ball was on Mark Walmer. Brian Dilley checks into uh, the ball game for Rob Lockerman. Rob has had a rough night. He's worked very hard, but he has not uh, put the points on the board really to show for it yet. 
Hodge has been to the free throw line. He has six, six points all from the field. First one's good. Clinton now back on top by two, 31-29. And Hodges rims that one out. Rebound on the inside. Nice job in there by Seeger. Nice move in the middle as oh, uh, Ryan drive. Dilly. Good drive by Dilly. Giving him four and a nice steal, but a travel also. Well, the uh, Clinton crowd does not like that as Ryan Dilly made the basket, came all the way back, intercepted the pass, and he gets called for traveling. But I'll tell you what, he was sliding. He got the ball and was sliding his feet. I think it was a good call. I better not say it too loud. Uh, <laughs> we've had them go both ways tonight. I think they kind of balance out. Tom Franklin. Deep in the corner now, a little trouble, but they swing it out to Grossman. Look where Franklin's playing. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, he's in the stands. Not from there, is he? Oh, my gosh, he's watch out, anyway. Bob! Oh, my God! <laughs> and Hodges gave him way out to watch him. And we've got a foul called now on an Evansville ball player getting up off the ground is number 41 for the Blue Devils, Jade Grossman. Well, I've got to say, Bob, I have never seen a ball player in high school shoot the three-pointer from that range. Well, that last one was 28 feet. Oh, my gosh, I'll tell you. I'm trying to pace that off there. That was easy, 28 feet. <laughs> Takes me a week to walk that far. That is unbelievable. Well, what's unbelievable is that they're trying to stop him from shooting at that, oh, yeah. that rate. They're, they had two guys out at him at the 28-foot mark. Yeah, they're going right out after him. Well, you know, you, you, you get burned I mean, and you stay away from the fire. You'd let Larry Bird shoot from there. <laughs> well, if they have a three-point contest around here, I'll tell you what, I'll know who'll be tough. Do I, I put my money on him. Brian Dilley cans the first one for Clinton. And they now have the uh, biggest lead of the evening at 34-29. Clinton got into a cold spell there for a while, and uh, Evansville had forged the lead. Now they come back, 35-29. Dilly gets them both. And six points for Dilly. Here we go with Franklin. Every time he gets his hands on the ball, I'm watching him now. Well, I'm, I'm questioning, can he shoot a jump shot? I don't think so. I mean, he, he couldn't get it there. There's no way with his body mass he could get a jump shot there. I've never seen anybody go up in the air and shoot a two-hand no, shot. No. Not from that range. He's, uh, I don't think he's quite strong enough to do that. Here we got a lie. Hodges gets the rebound. Underlays. Rebound Evansville. Yeah, we got a foul over the back on Seager. Corey Peay. Well, we're going to take a brief time out here with the score. Clinton 35, Evansville 29. We'll be right back. Mike Griffin along with Bob Morgan. We are in a very warm Clinton Cougar gym. And we have substitutions coming in. The Cougars have forged their biggest lead of the night over Evansville. 35-29. And Tim Tro at the free throw line, his first appearance there. He's not in our scorebook yet. He may, maybe he is. Tim is a real good future prospect for Coach Dwayne Updike. He is only a sophomore at six foot, so he's going to grow a little and, and get better and uh, looks like to be a pretty good ball player right now. Tro gets them both. He's got that David Rivers bend from the free throw line. Logterman, and I have a hunch Clinton's going to get Logterman in the action before it's over here. And uh, as I say it, who's that? Robbie Logterman cashes in. That gives Logterman eight. 37-31 Clinton, below the two-minute mark, first half of play. It's been a good one all the way, as we expected. Well, John Beanash goes three-pointer, and that comes off short. Rebound Brodsky. There's an offensive foul. Yeah, Brodsky, uh, Brodsky charged, getting up off the ground is Corey P to set up the wall. Brodsky couldn't penetrate. Even one of our officials, T.J. Deke, uh, wiping the perspiration off his brow a little oh, bit there. Jerry Slim, too. And, yeah. uh, and Jerry, you never see him sweaty no. such in superb condition. Yeah, he's pretty good shape. Yeah. I can't say that about T.J. Okay, we go uh, oh, back we, to the... <laughs> he'll see. He'll, you'll hear about that. Oh, he'll get me on the golf course. He always does. There we got the big three-pointer in the corner. And while we were talking, we're going to have to pick up that player. We were making fun of TJ there. That was Dilly. All right, Brian, Brian Dilly. Dilly. Come back no way with Beanash. Rebound on the inside. We've got a foul called on James Hodges. Hodges says no way. He didn't believe it. Who, me? Over the top, says TJ. Well, it's James second. But a nice lead by the Clinton Cougars. 40-31. This is Matt Brodsky on the line for Evansville, one of the starters, 6'3", senior. Coming into the ball game now is number 34, Chris Charland, making a, his first appearance for the Clinton Cougars. He's a 6'2 junior, Charland. 
This is Brodsky. Back of the iron, gets it in. Five for Matt. 40-32, eight point margin for Clinton. A minute 20 left, first half of play. Little shoe tying job and we're gonna be ready to go here. Jerry Schlem says, okay, here we go. Got another shot, young man. The fans giving Brodsky a little bit of business in his uh, visiting court here. And it apparently worked because here comes Clinton back left to right. Dilly, three point. He can do it. Off the back, rebound by Tro, and Tro will bring it up himself as we are down to the one minute mark. Move inside to Heritage. He'll uh, throw it away, and here we come back. We got a little break with uh, Dilly, and he will lay it in. Nice pass by Rob Lagerman. Brian Dilly on the end of that. Dilly with 11. Clinton now up by 10. Tom Franklin now will uh, we'll see if he looks for that three-pointer again. Watch out. Oh, good. Off the iron, and that will go out of bounds. Boy, that hit so hard it went all the way over into the stands off the, off the rim. Well, I guess when you're hitting them, you got to keep shooting them, but... Uh, oh, he's four for eight, so yeah, that's pretty good for yeah. three-point lane. Dwayne Updike, the Evansville coach, uh, was just talking to him, however, and said, move the ball around a little bit more. Well, if they were, uh, you know, if they were counting as, as two-pointers, he picked up an extra four points, so that'd be, really be like shooting six for eight. Hodge trapped in the corner, but he does get it back out. Lockerman right at the 26-second mark in the first half, and he cans it. Three, is it? I didn't see the hands go up. That was a two-pointer. Two-pointer. He had one foot on the line. We come back with a jump shot the other way, and that is no good. And with 12 seconds left, Clinton is going to have a chance to really extend the lead to 14. They lead by 12 right now. Lockterman, watch three. out. Off the top, Lockterman rebound. He follows it up. Nice job following his shot. Two seconds. One second. And the first half will come to a close. And the home fans are very happy. Clinton Cougars, and you can hear them right now, on top of the Evansville Blue Devils, 46 32. We'll be back with the second half right after these messages. Mike Griffin along with Bob Morgan back in a jam-packed Clinton Cougar gym. 46-32, Clinton on top of Evansville. And a hot Clinton gym, I'll tell you. I just took my uh, jacket off, sitting here in shirt <laughs> sleeves, and it's still warm. I'll tell you, it's warm. And this conference is pretty warm. We've got Clinton at 10-2, and two, and they win tonight, and uh, it's all she wrote in the Rock Valley Conference. And as you can see there, 10-2, and two, followed by Edgerton at 8-4, and four, and then comes the uh, Blue Devils from Evansville. They are all knotted up with Boyd Turner at 7-5, and five, and then down the lineup in the Rock Valley, as you can see. Well, they any, are back any, underway. Any combination of uh, Edgerton loss uh, tonight or next week or any win will clinch the title for the Clinton Cougars. Oh, well, we had a pretty exciting first half. We had a lot of three-pointers and a lot of action, and we've got a nice jump shot on the inside by Brian Dilley, and he gets the Cougars back on the roll. And that gives Dilley... The uh, leading scorer on the floor right now with 13 points. There we go. Bombs away. I'll tell you what. Tommy Franklin must have went back. He must have a, a net back in the locker room because he got back on line with another three-pointer. Well, that's five of them. 48-35. Clinton with a fairly comfortable lead, but with uh, Franklin in the lineup, that can be cut pretty well. Clinton will have a lot of patience now with this lead. Lockerman Travis. walks. I'll tell you, he's having a tough time, and one of the reasons, again, is Matt Brodsky, and we can't overlook this young man. He is done a very fine job defensively tonight on Lockerman. Well, they're giving Lockerman uh, a lot of screens underneath, and plus he has a lot of moves of his own. B. Nash gives it up to uh, the other B. Nash, and it goes back inside, and a nice layup by Brodsky. Well, Hodge didn't want to foul. He just stood with his hands up. He already has two, so he couldn't take a chance on that early third foul. Dilly with it. Our right to left, 11-point Cougar lead. Hodges will... Uh, Spin it back, and uh, that is Lockerman. Watch out. Nice shot by Lockerman. Well, you got a feeling if he can uh, get her going, as he seems to be, that uh, Clinton could be in the driver's seat. They lead now by 13. Though back we come with a three-pointer, just short on the iron. Nice rebound, and being fouled is Todd Heritage. Nice offensive rebound by Heritage, and he was hammered. Oh, that last one by Franklin was right on the money. He's 5 for 10 right now. Yeah, he came down. I'll tell you, that was right there and just came up about six inches short of being good. Heritage will attempt to give his team a 14-point lead, and he does. Todd Heritage. What am I saying, Bob? <laughs> They're down. They're down. <laughs> They're now down by a total of 12, and that comes off 50-38, Clinton on top. 
Back we come, and this is Del Gunnick. He saw a lot of rest. He should be ready to go in the second half. Hodges back out to Lockerman. Lockerman free throw line jumper. Gets a roll. There's the shooter's roll again. So Hodges, is Lockerman. Hodges have to be careful. He was up there hovering around that net with his hands, and he didn't get a piece of it, or we'd have had an offensive goaltending. Well, Lockerman getting close to his average. He's already has 16 tonight. Benash goes right down the pipe, and coming back quickly is Gunnick, and he gives up the pass to Dilly, and Dilly lays it in. Nice three on, three on two uh, fast break. Five Dilly, fifty. Dilly with fifteen now. He's doing a good job tonight. Five fifty now remaining in the third quarter of play. Fifty four thirty eight. Cougars on top of the Blue Devils. Nice pass inside. Jump shot is good by Joe Pinash. He's changing buckets now. Five for Joe. It's Brian Dilly. Gunnick Hodges. There's that screen for Lockerman. And Lockerman, head and shoulders fake, gets around easily, gets around his man, and Lockerman has decided to take over a little bit. Hit his last three shots, 18 the points. The lead is now forced to 16 by Clinton. Nice move by Lockerman as he plays a little bit of defense in there also. Beanash triple uh, faked inside, and Lockerman knocked it up in the stands. This is the little guy. This is Franklin. He likes that three-pointer. And Beanash, he'll uh, he'll take it to the paint every time he gets it. He puts up the jumper, and that's no good. Over the back, Sven. Sven Gonstad picks up the foul. Nice job on the rebound that time by Beanash, Joe Beanash. Schwinn's second foul. Evansville. Make that three on uh, Schwinn. And Joe Beanash cans it. Comes right back the other way. Six for Joe. Lead cut to 13. Hodges now, he uh, has not tried to go baseline a long time. He puts up a jumper and that's off. Rebound, Beanash. And here comes Evansville. Trail by 13, chance to get it down to 11. Both teams showing a little bit more patience now. Nice move on the inside by Heritage. And he's fouled as he beat his man into the oh, paint. Schwen will go out of the ball game now. That's his fourth foul. And... Uh, he was already trying to uh, come out of the ball game as Paul Wagner was on the bench, but the uh, play would not stop. And he picks up his fourth foul. Todd Heritage back on the stripe. This one's far from over, but they're going to certainly have to cash in with free throws like that and uh, maybe some more Franklin three-pointers. Well, this would be a game of spurts. I'm sure the Evansville Blue Devils are going to cut this lead, uh, which they are doing right now. They have it down to 11. 56-45, that's the margin for the Clinton Cougars. Defense now, defense. Things seven, very warm. Seven points for Todd Heritage on those two free throws. We've had a number of substitutes, but I wouldn't say uh, over-substituted. Oh, Hodges, nice baseline move. We were kind of waiting for that. He was successful with it a couple of times in the first half. And he has nine. 58-45, 4.08 remaining in the Third quarter of play. There's a long three-pointer is off by Beanash. Nice tip by Hodge. Oh, and we got Lockerman picking up the garbage, and he lays it in. We had a collision at midcourt. Lockerman, Johnny on the spot, 60-45. Franklin getting a lot more pressure out there now by Dilly, and they're not going to give him that three-pointer this half. Dilly's right out with him in no man's land. Beanash bounces it off his own foot. Franklin, uh, he, he wanted yeah, it. Yeah, he was checking. He was checking, <laughs> he was checking it out. Dilly was there. And uh, Heritage will uh, move to the stripe again. Todd Heritage has got that nice cut move through the lane, and uh, he picks up uh, picks up a few fouls with that. Brodsky will inbound. Last foul on Wagner. Inside, watch out, short jumper, and that's Matt Brodsky. 60-47. Brodsky, Brodsky has nine. 13-point lead for the Cougars from Clinton on their home court this evening. This is Lodgerman, has a little trouble with it, and T.J. Deke uh, calls a double dribble, and uh, I don't know. Look, he lost the handle. I don't know if he picked up the dribble or not. Tom Franklin backing in. 
Heritage. We'll see if he gives it up, but he does on the inside, and the foul should go on Hodges. Well, Hodges will be out. It should be his fourth, according to my book. And boy, I'll tell you, if it is, Bob, that's a big foul because he is a big man in there, and that 13-point lead is not insurmountable. He no, it is. It's not his fourth. Hodges uh, taking a look over at the bench, but uh, they're going to keep him in the ball game. That's a fifth, uh, fifth team foul. Fifth team foul to none. Oh, I'll tell you. Bratsky missed the free throw, and then we've got the, the tip John, in. John Beanish. Was that John Beanish? I believe it was Beanish. 50-49. Well, see, down, down to uh, 11. There's Dilly right down the middle, and... Uh, Double dribble. Well, a double dribble on him. Well, the Clinton well, bench did not like that call either. A little shot by Franklin here, and they'll have it down to eight. That certainly could. Oh, I don't think Dilly's going to give him that shot this half. He's going to have to get it on the break or something. Uh, he's, as you can see, he's really being harassed out there. Well, he puts it up anyway, and that comes off short, and we got a foul over the back. Yeah. Number 50, Paul Wagner. Paul got a little aggressive for that uh, defensive board, and we're going to have a timeout called by the Clinton Ball Club. They lead it 60-49 over Evansville. We'll be right back. Forty-nine, the home Cougars on top of the visiting Blue Devils from Evansville, Wisconsin. And which looked like they were starting to blow the game out of reach. Uh, all of a sudden, the Evansville Blue Devils are coming back, and Todd Heritage at the free throw line can cut that lead to nine points. In the last couple of minutes, Todd got a pitch a 10 out there on that free throw line. He's been there a long time. Ooh, Hodge way up for the defensive board. And he can't sky. We've said that earlier. Yeah, he's way over the rim. Lodgerman forces it up from the middle, and he gets it. Nice soft uh, jumper, off-balance jumper, 62-49. Clinton that's, extends. That's 10 points this quarter for Lockerman. Benash fall away jumper, and he gets the roll. Joe B. Nash. He gets that ball and he doesn't hesitate. I don't know if I've seen a guard in a long time go to the bucket like he does. And that's eight for Joe. Dilly looking for some help now and he uh, does get it with Gunnick. Gunnick moves inside and good move by Gunnick. The little guy went under the Eiffel Towers, got inside and laid it in. And Dell has six. 13 point Cougar lead. And that jumper by Brodsky coming right back the other way, exchanging buckets. Putting the points on the board. They really are. You know, this, the ball game started off at a very slow pace, and then bang, all of a sudden we cut loose. 64 points, and there's a minute to go in the third quarter. Franklin. We had a nice uh, pass inside by uh, Lodgerman, and uh, fouled was Del Gunnick, and he will go to the stripe. Got a little... Tommy Franklin uh, arguing a little bit out there and TJ Deke says uh, settle down, settle down, relax. Dell is a 5'10 senior. Bong off the back of the iron. Dell Gunnick will try to get the second one as Coach Jim Barnesnabel moves Lodgerman to the back court. And the second one is good by Gunnick. And the lead is back up to 12. And seven points for Del Gunnick. There's that three pointer again, and that's going to come up short. Boy, he's right on, but that came up short for Franklin. And back comes Lodgerman. Franklin working him over a little bit in the back court. But he's a little too slick with the ball, is Lodgerman. There's a three-pointer, and that's off the back of the iron. Get it down. Here comes Joe Benash, and he'll push it up. This kid won't hesitate. Inside, good. Nice shot by Heritage off of the Benash pass. That's nine for Heritage. Oh, we're back to ten. Bob, we get it to single figure, figures here, and we uh, may have a ball game yet. Well, there's a lot of points uh, that these teams can score, as uh, witnessed by the second quarter by the Clinton Cougars as they threw in 30 points. They all scored Evansville 30 to 13 to take that 46-32 lead. That was Del Gunnick called for steps and Evansville will have a chance to get it into uh, 
single digits here. We have 25 seconds remaining in the third quarter of play. Uh, they trail the Clinton Cougars 65-55. But right away, Clinton comes back with the turnover, and they pick up the ball. And they'll probably play it for one shot, and we'll see if Logterman takes it. That's him with the ball now. Gives it up to Gunnick. Gunnick takes Travel. three big steps, and I don't know what he was thinking there. I guess it's a little quicker that way if you don't dribble. Well, you get a little closer to the basket. Sure, too. just move it. <laughs> three steps. That happens. A little mental lapse, try to get a little better position, and now it'll be Evansville with plenty of time to get one shot. They have eight seconds on the clock. Well, I think Franklin's going to look for this one. Go. Back into the corner, down to two seconds. Brodsky jump shot. That doesn't even draw iron. And the third quarter comes to an end with the Clinton Cougars on top of the Evansville Blue Devils, 65-55. We'll be back with the last eight minutes right after these words. Versus Evansville, and the Cougars are on top of the Blue Devils, 65-55 from Clinton High School. Well, we'll see what uh, Evansville has left. We'll see what toll the heat has taken on these ball players as we've said again and again. It's important. It's very, very hot in here. Three-pointer by number 45, uh, Joe Beanash, and he cans it from our right side. And Evansville now gives him 10. Now we've got a uh, T.J. Deke is chasing something across the floor, and uh, by gosh, he caught it. Well, what happened? Not a boy, T.J. Okay. The lead has been cut to seven points on that three-pointer, so we, uh, we're we nearly at a new ball game here as Evansville is not about to quit tonight. Clinton Cougar is in possession, however, and there is a ball that comes off the hands of Dilly, but he hangs onto it, and he'll swing it back into the free throw line. Offensive foul. And, uh, an offensive foul is called as Franklin was set up in the lane. And that's the way the officials saw it. Well, here comes Evansville. He can cut it to five, Robert. Or with this guy with the ball, he can cut it to four real quick. There's a foul. Blocking foul on Dilly, and he nods his head in agreement. Picks up a quick two fouls. And T.J. Deke, one of the officials, yells out, hey, we're in the bonus. We're going to go to the line here. Well, we know that Franklin can shoot from 28 feet. Can he shoot from about 15? What do you think? <laughs> I'll bet he makes them. <laughs> and I'll bet he shoots that sh set shot, too. He certainly can can that baby from outside. Whoa, one-hander. This is a one-hand oh. uh, set. Well, I'll tell you well, what. I, I like him better from 28. Lotterman with the rebound. And we've got another blocking foul. Good call. Yeah. Matt Brodsky, we're moving with him. Well, they won't go to that. It's only the second team foul, so they have a couple more to waste. So no harm on that one. You can play at Lockerman Tough. Things uh, slowing down here with the fouls. In we go to Hodges. Back to Dilly. Dilly will run the show from outside. Try to get it in if you can to Lockerman. Todd Lockerman going inside to Hodges and nearly a turnover. Lodgerman comes back with it. Wise move. Going to set it up. Reload. And this time, uh, yeah, we we got Brodsky called again. Now uh, the blocking foul, and uh, I suppose that was one that could have won either way. It yeah, could have. Question. I'd like to see, see a replay on it, wouldn't you? <laughs> Corey Pete will inbound. We're very close to a technical foul here on the Blue Devils. Well, Dwayne Uptake will upset. Oh, he didn't like that call. No, he didn't. What you could have gone the other way. Yeah, it could have. Well, it was one of those ifs, you know. And Evansville comes back with it. He gets it anyway. Franklin will push it up, and I'll bet he shoots it. He lays it off to Heritage. Heritage, one-hander. Clinton. Here we go. Dilly, three-on-one. Lotterman. On three Good. Nice three-on-one bust out coming back for Clinton. 24 points for Lotterman. And Clinton extends that lead to 67-58, nine-point lead. One-hander way off that time by Beanash as he really forced the shot. Didn't show much patience that time. Evansville outscored the Clinton Cougars 23-19 in that third quarter after being outscored 30-13 in the second. Clinton uh, will probably start being a, a wee bit more patient here. They have been the last couple trips down. Uh, they're sitting on a nine-point lead. Why not? Six minutes exactly remaining in the ballgame as Hodges puts it up. Man, oh boy, that baby was halfway down and came out. Let's call a double dipper. Yeah, look good. And we got a timeout called by Evansville. And with the score, Clinton 67, Evansville 58, 549 remaining in the ballgame. We'll be right back. This 
Wildcats Clinton High School and the home team Cougars 67, the visiting Evansville Blue Devils 58. It's been a hot one on the court and in the stands. No question about it. We get a chance to talk about the Clinton girls. The Clinton girls also uh, won their final game, which gave them a perfect 14-0 record. Evansville was second right behind them with 11-3. So two very fine basketball programs for both the girls and the boys at Clinton and Evansville. That's Todd Heritage as he gets the nice pass on the inside, and Todd puts it down. He's been a big factor keeping Evansville in this ballgame. Well, Todd has 11 right now. Gives you a lot of bulk on the inside, and uh, you can shoot the ball. And we got a turnover now as we come back the other way with Brodsky. We'll see what he does with it, and he lays it in. Didn't well, use the board over the top of the iron. There's that game of spurts. It's down to five right now. Del Gunnick is up off the bench for Clinton, one of the starters, and he's going to check back in very quickly to try to quell the tide here as Evansville has come storming back. Lodgerman will go inside. He'll put up that jumper. Hodges up in the air, and Hodges is out-rebounded by the guy we talked about, Todd Heritage. James went up just a touch early, and there goes Beanash. She's not shy. Comes on the inside, and garbage time for John Beanash. And Clinton right away says, time out, Robert. And Evansville is right back into that ball game, 67-64, and her crowd is coming alive a little bit here. No question about it. They were down by 15. As we mentioned, it's a game of spurts, and uh, we knew this was going to be down to the wire. Four minutes, 43 seconds left, and uh, they cut it down to three, and the momentum has shifted over to Evansville. Let's take a look at some of these girls uh, who've been doing such a good job for the Clinton Cougars. You have uh, their very last final game. They defeated, uh, well, get this score, Clinton beat Bigfoot 70-26. to And the game that really determined the championship was the week before that where uh, Clinton defeated Evansville 50-43 in a, in a well-played game. Uh, they jumped off to a quick start and uh, never relinquished that, uh, that lead for... Uh, Amy Stone of Clinton had 14 points. Kelly Hartman, and uh, uh, she added 12. Carmen Forstrom for Evansville had 13. So uh, even uh, the other game, Chris Van Gelter, uh, Shahan, for and Amy Stone, all the Clintonville girls have done a wonderful job. We congratulate them on their undefeated championship. Tournament play will be starting. So they've got a super girls club as well as a very good boys club over. It's been a very good basketball year for for the Cougars so far, hasn't it? Oh, great sports town, both Evansville and Clinton. They're right in there all the time, football, basketball, baseball, wrestling, not too bad either. That's right. Dell Gunnick, and we had bodies all over, and Dell said, well, I'll just lay it in and end this fiasco, and it's 69-64, five-point lean regained by the Cougars. And Joe Beanash does not drive this time. He gives it to Heritage, and Heritage is the guy that's been doing the job, puts up the one-hander short, and we've got a traveling call on Joe Beanash. He shakes his head. Nope. I don't believe it. So only four points scored this quarter in four minutes by the Clinton Cougars after scoring 30 in the second. They have four right now midway through the final quarter. 69-64. Clinton inbounding. Gunnick will push it up quickly. Pretty good little ball handling guard. Corey Peed gives it up to Hodges, back to Lodgerman. He likes to shoot it just inside the three-point range. No good. Rebound Brodsky for Evansville. And we've got a foul call on Tim Seeger. And the crowd, uh, well, they're as vocal now as they have been all night. They did not like that call. Well, every little bit uh, tightens this ball game up. And Tommy Franklin will go back to the line. He didn't show us much of a... A touch there last time. He's been the long range shooter this evening. Well, that's a third foul on Tim Seeger. Franklin 0 for 1 from the free throw line. 5 for 11 from the three point line. And Franklin gets the first one. Give him 16. Leading scorer right now. But well balanced. 11, 12, 13, 16, and 8 for the starters. Good, as we mentioned in the, that's the, right. at the start of the game. A well balanced team. That's we, why they don't have anybody in the, in the top 12 in conference scoring because they're all balanced. And important free throw is missed by Franklin and the lead stays at four at the 343 mark in the ball game. Clinton's still on top. Clinton has led most of the way. We did have a spurt there in the first half where Evansville forged the lead. Nice work by Heritage on the save. Oh, oh nice job. That hustle, that's hustle. Big strong boy and he goes back to Joe uh, Benish, Benash, and Benash holds it up, goes back outside. 
There's a running one-hander by Franklin. Comes off, and look who's there. Todd Heritage. Watch out. That's no good. The workhorse. Boy, offensive boards. Brodsky gets the bucket. 15 points for Brodsky, but boy, what a workhorse. 69-67. Heritage in there, I'll tell you. Controlling both ends. We've got a foul <coughs> called uh, up the middle. Well, that will not be a shooting foul yet. The next one will. And it Lagerman's at the free throw line, but... Uh, Looked like that one against Tim that, Troll. Wait, that couldn't be a shooting foul. That's not a shooting foul. They have one more to... Next one will be. Yeah. Yeah, okay. They got her straightened out. Clinton will inbound under their own bucket, and we'll see what happens. Nice job into Hodges. Hodges puts it up. Tough to stay with him, I'll tell you. Gets a roll. Oh, that's where that height advantage and that leaping advantage can take its toll. Four-point lead for Clinton now. We're beneath three minutes. B. Nash, he's not shy. He's blocked in the middle by Gunnick. But watch out, there's Heritage. Good head and shoulder fake by Heritage. Give him 13. Four-point lead. Well, it's been an exciting, exciting ball game tonight. The crowd uh, certainly got their money's worth that came here. Well, this kind of game we, we knew it would be. Lodgerman, and he is hammered by Tim Troll from behind. Well, Lagerman's not the guy you want at that free throw line, not with his eye and shooter's touch. He's two for two from the line right now, but uh, he hasn't missed too many shots the second half. And Coach Dwayne Updike was not happy with that foul, uh, putting, as you say, putting Lagerman on the line. He can extend the lead to, and he does, to three points. Lagerman with 25. And this is where you've said so many times, Bob Morgan, that uh, the team that can shoot free throws in a ball game like this is a team that's going to win the ball game. Right. And inevitably it happens any, over and any, over. Anytime two good teams play, look for the last three minutes free throws. That'll decide it. And there's two big ones for Lockerman right there. He gives his team a four-point lead. There's a lot of possibilities. Heritage has been doing a whale of a job inside. Beanash right here has been has been driving, and he does, and he's fouled again. Foul goes uh, on Del Gunnick. Joe Beanash go to the line. He has not been there tonight. He has a total of eight points. He has not scored this quarter. He had a basket in the first, second, two in the third. I was waiting for the official to hand Joe the ball. I would wait for Joe to drive the paint. <laughs> he likes to go with it every time he can. Every time he can. But he collects the first free throw. Now you notice on your uh, on your screen. Well, the official's moving way off the line. He normally stands. Right across from the free throw line. That free throw is missed, and another important one goes by the way. Those ever important free throws. Still three. That was Lodgerman with a big rebound. They like to work out of that corner to Hodges, and they'll swing it back to Lodgerman. Timmy Tro doing a pretty good job on Lodgerman now. Definite foul. Joe Beanash, a little aggressive in the middle. Well, that's four and four and Joe. They've got Joel listed at 5'10". I don't know, I'll tell you, if he's that tall, but uh, he plays a lot bigger than 5'10". He's in there to, for keeps. On the line, Corey Peed. Six-foot junior. Oh, nice touch. Nice extension. Oh, he's three for three from the line right now. All his points, all three of them are coming from the free throw line. You mentioned he's a junior. He'll be back. Yep. He has a nice touch. He does. They're very nice. He'll Full do nothing, extension. But nothing but improve. 75-70. Clinton again squeaks away. They're just pulling it away. We're just below the two-minute mark. 75-70, as we said. You got a feeling that uh, they may look to Franklin for that three-pointer. And we have a almost a turnover. Franklin comes back behind the back pass to Heritage. And not a wise pass, I might add. And they call a foul on Heritage, reaching in, trying to tie up Corey Peed. The pass was right there, but Heritage wasn't expecting it. But it, uh, it was right there in his hands, right chest high. We'll check that on Peed. That's uh, Sven Gonstad who will go to the line. He's number 32 for Clinton. Swen is three for four from that spot. Has not scored from the field. Minute yes, he 43. Has. He has. He made a three-point play. A basket and a free throw. And he gets a nice cut. Gives him five. Well, we're down to the free throws. Six point Clinton lead, minute 43 ball game. Gets them both. Nice touch by Gonstead as well. Well, if you make them, you pad the lead. If you miss them, 
momentum can swing. Seven is a big lead now for uh, the Clinton Cougars. There's B. Nash, he fires it inside, turn around Heritage, and he is hammered from behind, I believe. I yeah, don't, I don't that, think- That would be at Hodges, no. Yeah, that'll go on number uh, 32, Gonstead. Hodges had him front, well, Gonstead well, if that's came over the he's out of it. I believe it is Gonstead. Well, he's gone. That's five, according to my book. And here he comes. Nice hand for Sven Gonstad, the first casualty of tonight's ball game. He fouls out at the 130 mark. Very, very big, a standing ovation. Yeah. Good, nice job. What did he check out with in terms of points? Uh, he he had six. He had uh, he was four for five from the free throw line, and he had one basket. But uh, did a yeoman's job on the inside on rebounding and playing defense. Aggressive ball player. Very good. Must free throws without a doubt for Heritage. His team is seven down. And that's nothing. Rebound, Lodgerman. Okay, we uh, well, had that didn't count. Good call by TJ. You know, t I've seen TJ. A, did he say my mistake? Yeah. I play golf with a guy, and he never makes a mistake. I mean, you know, he makes seven. He'll put down four. You know, what do you? And well, when it's good. <laughs> Just kidding, TJ. He's bigger than I am. I got to take it easy. Well, golfers. Huh? Will never admit they make mistakes. Oh no no basketball no, no. You, they will, but no. golfers will not admit they made a mistake. No, did you hit the wrong club, TJ? No, 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 no not me. We got a pushing foul called on Joe Benash. Oh, well, he's gone. And uh, Joe's gone. And Joe uh, did not like it. Yep, Joe's gone. Uh, so both uh, Evansville and Clinton lose a ball player, and and uh, John Benash will Benash will check into the ball game for Joe. And Joe didn't like the call very much, but uh, that's what the guys in stripes are for. 77-71, Clinton. Every time they go to line, they can boost the lead. Well, Joe uh, leaves the game with nine points, four baskets and one free throw. All these free throws are paying off. They have not missed <laughs> in this uh, this final quarter. They're, They're kicking seven everything for, in. Seven for seven. Only two baskets from the field, but... As we said before, these free throws in the last three minutes will decide the game. Boy, and they're pure, too. They're not getting rolls. Uh, two right down to the bottom of the net by Brian Dilley, and yeah. they lead by eight Do the Cougars. Brian Dilley, what a game he has. He has 17 points, including one three-pointer. And we, uh, looks like we had a kick violation there. Well, Franklin's going to have to go for some three-pointers now. I think he's, Coach uh, Dwayne Updike will give him the green light. Any place that he's open, he's going to bomb it. They need him right now with a minute seven, eight points down. And he does. He brings Franklin out to the top now, and they'll see if they can't uh, maybe pick for him or to get him open. Hodges almost a steal. Heritage goes right down the lane, lays it in. Good heads-up play again by Heritage. He's played a whale of a ball game tonight. Six. One minute exactly, and the lead is down to six by Clinton. Well, they're going to run run the clock now and get fouled. They're going to stall her out and get fouled. Logerman. And that's not the guy to foul, but that's the guy that... Uh, Coach Jim Barnstable wants with the ball at crunch time and with 51 seconds. Uh, and we've got 51 seconds now. As you said, we've got a six-point lead by Clinton, and we're going to take our final break, and we'll be back right after this. Bob Morgan, and we are 51 seconds away from the end of tonight's ball game. The Clinton Cougars on their home court, leading the Evansville Blue Devils 79-73. On the line, Todd, Rob, excuse me, Rob Lodgerman. 6'1 sophomore, highly touted, fine ball player. He has his average, 27 points. Well, we scored over 150 points tonight, so it started out to be a low-scoring affair, as we said earlier, has turned into a, Finally a good missed. ball game. It's the first one he missed, he was 6-for-6 uh, six six from the free throw line. This is the guy, Franklin, he got to spring him somehow, he goes from way out, my gosh. Say, that hit the exit light and uh well you needed radar well, <laughs> to detect the ball where the ball was on that yeah. shot the clinton fans kind of yucking it up about that but you know that's well, what they, they had to do they, they had to do it yeah they got to do it and he's the guy that can do it he proved that earlier del gunnick is uh hammered oh, no foul. yeah we got it on the back side the call uh looks like it goes on heritage yeah uh maybe not no, no question on that one 
And going to the line is Del Gunnick. Gunnick is one for three from that spot. Well, this one could be in the history books. It would put the Cougars at uh, 14 and five overall and 13 and two in the Rock Valley Conference. Championship. And, uh, wow, that is a championship, this Robert Morgan. This is a Morgan. championship right here. If they win this one, they won it. There'll be some celebrating on the court after this, I would imagine. 81-73, 33 seconds. 5'10", senior Gunnick gets it. Well, they're tough on free throws. Well, each one is a nail in the coffin, right? Well, it's 12, 12 out of 13. The only one that missed, surprisingly, was uh, Lockerman. And we come right back, and Tom Franklin does cash the three-pointer. We knew he could do it. We've got a backcourt foul called on one of three Blue Devils that uh, surrounded the Cougar. That's six, six three-pointers for uh, Tom, Tom Franklin. And Logterman, it seems like every time we turn around, he's on the line. Of course, they want him to handle the ball as much as possible in the last few seconds. Free throw is good. He'll get another shot. 28. Eight-point margin for the Cougars and uh, maybe going to nine. And that's the way it is. 84-75. Desperation time for the Blue Devils. Nothing to be ashamed of. They played a whale of a ball game tonight. They were Excellent really in game. it all the way. And we got Hodges on a breakaway. Slammer jammer. Nope. We got a foul on Heritage. And Hodges was looking slam jam. He was kind of trying to get his timing on his steps. But that was just enough for Todd Heritage to catch him. We're going to have a final timeout called by Dwayne Updike, the Evansville coach. And we'll keep it right here with 10 seconds to go on the timeout. 84-75, nine-point lead for the Clinton Cougars. Well, and uh, it's no question uh, they're going to win this one here, to, here tonight, 84-75 with 10 seconds left, and they'll be going to the free throw line. And, of course, that'll be the uh, uh, second title in the last three years, and it's undisputed championship uh, because Evansville uh, is definitely out of the race, and... Uh, doesn't make any difference what Edgerton does. Uh, they would have to win two, and Evansville would have, have to have lost their last two games. But Log Rob Logerman, uh, six one and a half sophomore, uh, he had 40 points in that first game against uh, Evansville early in the year, and he's been over 30 points six times this season, and he leads the league with 27 points. He has two more years to play. He has 29 right now. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's, that's one of those good-looking sophomores. Uh, if you're Coach Jim Barnstable, that's a uh, you know. Nice to look forward to yep. next year's basketball season when yep. this one ends. But uh, they may uh, go a long way. When do college coaches start looking? I mean, do they look as far down as the sophomore year? I suppose they do when you're like this, huh? Oh, Once somewhat. Uh, juniors, they'll look at some of the juniors, but uh, not so much the sophomores right now. But uh, I'm sure they know about them. He's a good one. There's but no he's, gotta, about it. he's gotta grow a little, he's gotta put on a little meat. As uh, you know, like they say, there's all kinds of 661 uh, guards throughout the country, all is, kinds of them. This is James Hodges with another nail. 85-75, free throws, bring it up to 10 now. 12 for Cougars on top. Six-five, senior comes off short, rebound, and that baby is forced up and in by Corey Peed. Acrobatic shot, brings it to 87 points. Big scoring night for Clinton. Turnaround jump shot at the buzzer is good by John Beanash. And the celebration begins, as you can see on the court. Conference champion. Rock Valley Conference champions. 87-77 over Evansville. Handshakes all around. We'll be back for a final wrap-up, some final words about this championship right after this. Bob Morgan, and we are 51 seconds away from the end of tonight's ball game. The Clinton Cougars on their home court leading the Evansville Blue Devils 79-73. On the line, Todd, Rob, excuse me, Rob Logterman. 6'1 sophomore, highly touted, fine ball player. He has his average, 27 points. Well, we scored over 150 points tonight, so it started out to be a low scoring affair, as we said earlier, has turned into a, Finally a good ball game. First one he missed, he was uh, six for six from the free throw line. This is the guy Franklin. He got to spring him somehow. He goes from way out. My gosh. I'll tell you, that hit the exit light. And uh, Well, you needed radar 
Well, <laughs> to detect the ball where the ball was on that yeah. shot. The Clinton fans kind of yucking it up about that, but you know that's well, what they've they got to do. They, they had to do it. Yeah, they got to do it. And he's the guy that can do it. He proved that earlier. Del Gunnick is uh, hammered. Oh, no foul. Woo. Yeah, we got it on the back side. The call uh, looks like it goes on Heritage. Yeah. Uh, maybe no, not. No question on that one. We're going to the line is Del Gunnick. Gunnick is one for three from that spot. Well, this one could be in the history books. It would put the Cougars at uh, 14 and five overall and 13 and two in the Rock Valley Conference. Championship. And, uh, wow, that is a championship, this Robert Morgan. This is a Morgan. championship right here. If they win this one, they won it. There'll be some celebrating on the court after this, I would imagine. 81-73, 33 seconds. 5'10", senior Gunnick gets it. Well, they're tough on free throws. Well, each one is a nail in the coffin, right? Well, it's 12, 12 out of 13. The only one that missed, is, uh, surprisingly, was uh, Lockerman. And we come right back, and Tom Franklin does cash the three-pointer. We knew he could do it. We've got a backcourt foul called on one of three Blue Devils that uh, surrounded the Cougar. That's six, six three-pointers for uh, Tom, Tom Franklin. And Logterman, it seems like every time we turn around, he's on the line. Of course, they want him to handle the ball as much as possible in the last few seconds. Free throw is good. He'll get another shot. 28. Eight-point margin for the Cougars and uh, maybe going to nine. And that's the way it is. 84-75, desperation time for the Blue Devils. Nothing to be ashamed of. They played a whale of a ball game tonight. They were Excellent really in game. it all the way. And we got Hodges on a breakaway. Slammer jammer, nope. We got a foul on Heritage. And Hodges was looking slam jam. He was kind of trying to get his timing on his steps, but that was just enough for Todd Heritage to catch him. We're going to have a final timeout called by Dwayne Updike, the Evansville coach. And we'll keep it right here with 10 seconds to go on the timeout. 84-75, nine-point lead for the Clinton Cougars. Well, and uh, it's no question uh, they're going to win this one here, to, here tonight, 84-75 with 10 seconds left, and they'll be going to the free throw line. And, of course, that'll be the uh, uh, second title in the last three years, and it's undisputed championship uh, because Evansville uh, is definitely out of the race, and... Uh, doesn't make any difference what Edgerton does. Uh, they would have to win two, and Evansville would have, have to have lost their last two games. The Log Rob Logerman, uh, six one and a half sophomore, uh, he had 40 points in that first game against uh, Evansville early in the year, and he's been over 30 points six times this season, and he leads the league with 27 points. He has two more years to play. He has 29 right now. <laughs> I'll tell you, well, that, that's one of those good-looking sophomores. Uh, if you're Coach Jim Barnstable, that's a uh, you know. Nice to look forward to yep. next year's basketball season when yep. this one ends. But uh, they may uh, go a long way. When do college coaches start looking? I mean, do they look as far down as the sophomore year? I suppose they do when you're like this, huh? Oh, Once somewhat. Uh, juniors, I'll look at some of the juniors, but uh, not so much the sophomores right now. But uh, I'm sure they know about him. He's a good one. There's but no he's, got about a, it. he's got to grow a little. He's got to put on a little meat. As, uh, you know, like they say, there's all kinds of 6-6-1 six, six, uh, guards throughout the country, all is, kinds of them. This is James Hodges with another nail. 85-75, free throws, bring it up to 10 now. 12 per Cougars team. on top. Six five senior comes off short, rebound, and that baby is forced up and in by Corey Peed. Acrobatic shot, brings it to 87 points. Big scoring night for Clinton. Turnaround jump shot at the buzzer is good by John Beanash. And the celebration begins, as you can see on the court. Conference champions. Rock Valley Conference champions. 87 77 over Evansville. Handshakes all around. We'll be back for a final wrap up, some final words about this championship right after this.